Hello and welcome to State of the Economy. Today we have with us Dr. Pranav Sen, Chairman of National Statistical Commission of India, who will uh, explain to us the recent review of India's GDP figures for 2013-14 and 14-15 uh, and the controversy surrounding that. Uh, the government has uh, gladly accepted the, uh, the changes in the uh, GDP figures uh, and the changes in methodology and they have in the budget uh, projected 8 to 8.5% 8 8 gro GDP growth based on uh, what uh, the, uh, the, the statistical uh, commission uh, proposed and uh, what has been done by CSO. So uh, let's uh, look into some of the, the, the details of how this GDP uh, changes have come about and, and what are the controversies uh, around it. Uh, some analysts, uh, domestic uh, analysts and global analysts, uh, are saying that they're a bit confused, but they're saying it also because some of our policymakers are saying they don't understand uh, exactly how these changes have come about, including our own chief economic advisor, uh, Dr. Arvind Subramaniam, although he's accepted those figures. So, so we have uh, Dr. Pranav Sen with us to really explain, because he's been uh, a, the chief statistician of India earlier, uh, and he has been associated with our statistical uh, 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 exercise of building our statistics, evolving our statistics, uh, correcting our uh, statistics in regard to industry, uh, services, agriculture, etc. So welcome to our show, Dr. Pradeep Sen. So we thought you are the right person because, uh, because you've been so close to all these exercises and you, you really have the smell test as it were, you know. Uh, so you, like a good tea taster, you are a, uh, I can call you a, a, a taster of statistics. <laughs> so, so please tell us, what is this controversy about? Your, the government has accepted your exercise. They have used your exercise to project 8.5% a, a uh, uh, growth in the budget. Uh, they're happy about it. And yet, some policymakers, uh, uh, they are publicly saying they are a bit confused. They don't understand the data. Uh, well, some private sector analysts are saying that they would like to see a, s a whole series uh, of how these, uh, if GDP changes for 2013, 14, 14, 15, they would like to see 12, 13, 11, 12, also going back to, say, 2007, 8, 8, 9. Now, how do you look at all this? Well, you know, <clears throat> this uh, particular base revision, uh, when we shifted from 2004, 5 base to 2011, 12 base, I think is the <clears throat> most far-reaching revision of the national accounts that we have ever had. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> it has a very large number of dimensions and a lot of changes have been brought in. Now these changes actually should be classified into three broad categories. Category. The first category is to bring our national accounts in sync with the international standards which have been laid down by the United Nations under their system of national accounts. Uh, so that's first. So those are changes which mainly relate to the way the data is presented, where the definitions are, are made. Mm -hmm. The second set of changes are conceptual in nature, um, which means you're defining things in a particular way. And the third set of changes arises from new data being available, okay. which is replacing old data which was not so reliable. So what we find in the, the new series is a combination of all these three sets of, of issues. When you say new data, is it new economic activity was not, which was not captured mm, earlier? Well, no. Um, there may not be new economic activities. There may be old economic but activities, not captured. but not captured okay. earlier. There are, of course, new economic activities that also yeah. exist. So you have both, both. both happening. And... Um, the base change also gives us an opportunity mm -hmm. to review the methodology that we had used earlier. Okay. And if there were any issues or problems with that methodology, to get that changed. Okay. So when we were doing this, um, the, I think you need to understand the way our system operates. The National Statistical Commission is not involved on a day-to-day -day basis in the data business. It has two major roles. The first role is to ensure that the statistics that are produced by the government of India mm -hmm. 
adhere to the best international standards, okay. data permitting. So it approves or it condemns uh, concepts and methodologies okay. that are being used in our data generation. The second thing it does is it acts as a conscience keeper. We are a regulator for official statistics. Mm -hmm. And if people feel that there's something wrong with the statistics, it's the job of the commission to review okay. uh, and to come up with a definitive statement on whether the data is accurate to the extent that data permits. So the new series, you said it passed your test essentially? No, not yet. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the new series is concerned, mm. well, again, let me give you the background a little bit further. The actual work is done by what's called the Advisory Committee on National Accounts, yeah. which is a group of specialists, mm -hmm. they're probably the best we have in the country, yeah. who recommend mm -hmm. changes in the national accounts. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it is a standing committee, it, it happens all along. And we must add here, Dr. Purison, before you proceed, that all international uh, multilateral bodies, agencies, have so far considered Indian statistical methods, including NSS uh, collection, collation, they have, they're regarded quite highly internationally. That's right. right. Yeah. Very high. Yeah. I just, just wanted to say that. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Um, not only do they regard it high, highly, we also have had a history of inviting the IMF, who are the custodians of the national account systems, to come in and do a detailed review of our methodology. Okay. Unlike China. Yeah, they, they constantly raise questions, questions about China, but they never raise questions, questions about, about Indian statistics so far. No, because we do invite them in. Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, you know, uh, when was it? Sometime last year, before this, uh, mm -hmm. this change had happened, mm -hmm. the National Statistical Commission had actually uh, told the uh, Ministry of Statistics mm -hmm. that they should invite an IMF team mm -hmm. to review our national accounts as well as our price collection. So that's the system. So what has happened in this case is that the National Accounts Advisory Committee has made particular recommendations as to how the national account should be done. These have come up to the Commission. We have reviewed these suggestions. We have accepted some. We have not accepted some. Mm -hmm. And then we have approved the methodology which the CSO is supposed to use okay. to, collate, uh, to collate this data. Now, whether the CSO has done it as per the approvals mm -hmm. is something that we will have to check and review. Okay, so That's a later step. Said, so you, you still have to actually go into it and see whether uh, the CSO has done it as per the as per methodology the that you have approved. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And that will happen in the okay. near so, future. So in that sense, the issue is not fully settled. You know, by and large, our experience is that uh, there is... has historically never been okay. uh, deliberate tampering with these approvals. Sure, sure. Um, errors may happen. I mean, human errors can always happen. Yeah, some errors here and there can get corrected. Can, can always, and those would get corrected, the, the, the identified and corrected. Dr. Sen, the, the real issue is people are a bit confused that, that this country was <clears throat> led into believing and it was probably the reality on the ground also led the people, the analysts, the business community, the policy making, into believing, believing that 2013-14 was probably one of the worst years uh, of the last uh, decade. Uh, policy paralysis, uh, people said, used all kinds of characterizations. Economy was in an ICU. Uh, politically, it was used by this government which came to power to suggest that, uh, that we are, ICU, patient is coming out of ICU, it will take time to walk. So what surprised people is that that if you had 6.9% growth, then you couldn't have been in, in an ICU. So maybe that characterization was extreme. And if your characterization was that the patient was in ICU and you said, this government came and said, we'll take two years to start running, then now they're saying that we are probably running in the next few months. Well, no, they said they're running. I mean, the, <laughs> yeah, running. Uh, so, you said, eight to eight and a half percent. It, it, it happens when you're running. Sprinting. Yeah, yeah this, you're sprinting. So which characterization should should we believe and and why is the the chief economic advisor and the finance minister himself uh, sending this sig signal that he that he's he's okay with the uh, data collection but he's he's a, he's puzzled now what does he mean when he says puzzled what sort of signal does it 
sent to the global community. You know, when, I mean, to put it most crudely, I think the whole problem arises from a bad habit I think all of us have gotten into, which is we confuse the GDP with the value of output. Okay? It is not. It is the value added. Okay? There's a big difference between the two. So what happens is you start looking at all indicators which are linked to the volume of output. Yeah. So you're looking at things like the index of industrial production, which is a volume measure. Mm -hmm. You're looking at imports, which are also volumes. You're looking at uh, bank credit, is also related to exports, volume. Exports, volume. Exports, Export volume. Exports, negative. Something. January, minus 11%. Yes. Okay. So you're looking at these volume mm -hmm. indicators and saying, you know, what is going on? Mm. The volume indicators are not going anywhere. And mm -hmm. it's absolutely true. And those volume indicators are, in fact, very accurate. Mm -hmm. And what they're saying is a consistent story, which is that as far as the volume is concerned, mm -hmm. not much is happening. Okay. Okay. Dr. Pranab Sen, Chairman of National Statistical Commission, is uh, explaining to us in some detail uh, the, the GDP upgrade that has happened uh, uh, for the last two uh, fiscal. So, Dr. Sen, you're trying to explain the fine difference between volume of output uh, as opposed to value add. That's right. Could you please t tell us how uh, these two play let out, play out in, in the in the GDP uh, let, let me changes. give you a very specific example yeah. which people would yeah, understand. Give us a small yeah, yeah, example, okay. pro proxy example. Consider Maruti okay. company, uh -huh. Maruti Suzuki company. Maruti produces the 800 yeah. and it produces the CRs. The 800 costs 4,000 rupees, the CRs cost 10,000 plus. Uh -huh. Correct? But they're both cars. Yeah. Now what a volume index will do or any volume measure will do is it will treat the 800 and the CRs as if they were identical. Okay. Okay. Now think of a situation where in one year I'm producing only 800s mm -hmm. and in the next year I produce only CRs. Okay. Okay. For the same volume of production. Mm -hmm. Unit, units of production. Yeah. Same units of production. Mm -hmm. My value goes up enormously, enormously. by two and a half times. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now this is the difference. So when we are thinking about value added, mm. you have the volume, certainly is important. Along with the volume, it is the average price mm -hmm. of that volume, which is also important. And then from that you deduct the cost of inputs. Cost of input. Now cost of inputs again has two dimensions, the price dimension, what is the average price of inputs, mm. and how much input you are using mm. for every unit of output. Okay, so you have these four dimensions that are playing out. Mm -hmm. So you can have a situation where you have zero growth in output, mm -hmm. but your inputs go down mm -hmm. and your value added goes up. Okay? Mm -hmm. If you look at the data that's been put out, the interesting year mm -hmm. is not 13 14. The interesting year is 12 13. 12 13. Yeah? In 12 13, the value of output actually shrinks by 3%. It's minus 3% growth. Minus 3%. Minus 3%. Okay. Now that should, that gels well mm -hmm. with all the observations that you've been making that, you know, the economy is going nowhere. So what are the GDP growth uh, now for However, mm -hmm. the value added growth mm -hmm. was plus 4%. Okay. Okay. What happens if you take the share of value added to the total value of output. Mm -hmm. In 11-12, it was 21%. Okay. So for every rupee mm -hmm. of, uh, of sales that happened, 21 paisa was the value added. Okay. In 12-13, that jumps from 21 rupees to 20, 21 paisa to 23 paisa. Yeah. Okay? Now that doesn't sound very very large. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it as a percentage, mm -hmm. it's 10%. Okay, 10%, yeah. Yeah, it's a 10% turnaround. turnaround. Now that's exactly what's happening. Okay. Right? So you can get this sort of thing happening. Now this can happen for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. As I said, the first one is quality, the whole Maruti story. If I'm going up market in terms of quality, this will happen. Mm -hmm. 
The second is if I'm being, becoming more efficient. If I have invested productivity improvement, is it? In productivity improvement, mm -hmm. in better equipment, okay. this will happen. Mm -hmm. If the, my price of inputs goes down, mm -hmm. this will happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So it can be any or all of these factors taken together mm -hmm. which can give rise to this. Okay. But it is important for you to know which one it is. Because depending upon your diagnosis... Also economic acti activity which is probably not being captured under the present methodology. I mean, I, I'll give you one example yeah. which, which was told to me by an official. He said, for instance, in, in the, for the services sector, hotels as a, as a service industry, the Corporate Affairs Ministry looks at uh, data submitted by the the companies and they were capturing only three listed five-star hotels out of Mumbai. Later when smaller companies start filing returns through computerized uh, better technology uh, driven systems, they figured that that hundreds of new three-star hotels which had come up during the boom period are not being captured. So when you added that, there was a bump up in the probably in the, both the volume as, as well as in this case value as you said, possibly. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Okay. Um, that's that's problematic. Mm -hmm. You know, the data that we used to get mm -hmm. uh, used to be from a survey that the Reserve Bank of India did, okay. which is where this three hotel business comes from. Mm -hmm. The likelihood is that they were picking the three top hotels. Okay. And it may well be that the value added per room mm -hmm. in one of these big hotels is much higher mm -hmm. than in the little ones that have come up subsequently. So, okay. you know, that ratio can move in either direction. Oh, it can move in yeah, either. it can move, move in either direction. Okay. What certainly does expand is the volume. The volume expands? It could. Okay, this is interesting. You are make, uh, making a very clear distinction between you may get a higher volume, but you may not get, get a correspondingly higher, higher value. That's right. That's right. Okay. Okay. But, again, having said that, you need to be very careful. And that's why reading the, the GDP numbers carefully is important. If you think about employment, Employment is directly related to the volume. Okay. Okay. So if I'm getting, let us say, productivity improvements, I can get high GDP growth, but I may get no employment. The whole jobless growth story yes, is essentially a productivity story. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, this is possible. If like the you're, you're absolutely right. The Economist uh, magazine said that in this century, 21st century. Eight and a half, nine percent growth would produce far less jobs than uh, a similar growth rate in the twentieth, mid twentieth century That's produced. Right? That's absolutely correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And as I said, the, this is really what we need to be careful about. So, if you are looking at these figures, what what the figures are saying is volume growth is sluggish. Mm -hmm which means that as far as employment is concerned, you shouldn't expect a whole lot when the new employment data comes out. Um, however, efficiencies have gone up, which means that the, the Indian companies mm -hmm. are probably much more competitive mm -hmm. than they used to be. Okay. Right? So it's, there's a plus and minus to it. So this explains what you just said. From a political economy perspective, it explains why there was probably growth in volume, uh, maybe even higher GDP growth as now reflected for 2013-14, 6.9%, yet widespread uh, dissatisfaction yeah. because maybe because employment was not growing. Right. right. So, so that could have been the, the that was probably the cause of uh, a kind of sentiment downturn psychologically because mm -hmm. economy also. Uh, there's a psychology which builds in, in an economy which yeah. is where employment is not getting created but volume growth is happening. That's right. So is that a... It's not volume growth. Volume growth is not happening. Uh, income growth is happening. Income, okay. 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 So basically people are not getting jobs but income is being created. Okay. 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 So be, what it means if you think about it is that the share of labor <clears throat> in the so when overall... when I say volume growth because of higher productivity you get higher volume, but not... You're not getting higher volume. Uh -huh. You may be getting exactly the same volume. Okay, okay. But okay. you're making more money out of that volume. You're making more money out of that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So, so, so you think that was, that's, that's what was happening, uh, if, if, if that is the diagnosis? Well, that's what the data suggests, okay. in effect. 
Okay. Okay? Mm. And, you know, if you really think about it, uh, the last three years has also seen the fastest growth mm -hmm. in the stock market okay. ever. Mm -hmm. yeah. And somebody should be asking the question that if the economy was going nowhere, mm -hmm. how were these valuations going up so rapidly? Okay. After all, the investment. The last two years, thing, particularly. Last three years, actually. Three years, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two years for certainly. Certainly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the reason is that this is, that this actually explains that. Mm -hmm. that what is happening is that the valuation of the company was going up because the earnings of the companies were going up. The, the, the uh, volumes may not have been going up, but earnings were. The top line uh, was... Uh, top line was relatively slow. Slow, okay. Top line was slow. It's the bottom line which is, was improving. Okay. So that explains what you just said. The earnings <coughs> were going up because of higher productivity, but not necessarily... Uh, not necessarily volumes. Volumes. And therefore not necessarily employment. Okay. So, so does that square with the 6.9% uh, the growth in 2013 uh, 14? Uh, you would say. Yeah, no, 13 14 is different. Mm -hmm. See, in 12 13, the value of output mm -hmm. actually reduces. I said minus 3%. Okay. But the value added grows at, at four, four, more than 4%. In 12 13? In 12 13. So, what is the 12 13 GDP figure now, the revised series? The growth? Yeah. The growth is, I think, 6.9%. Uh, something okay. and then it goes up to 6.9. Okay. Um, in 13-14 on the other hand and this is where I really don't understand the, the debate. Mm -hmm. The index of industrial production was showing that 13-14 was better than 12-13 anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. sure. So 12-13 uh, so was in fact the worst year. Mm -hmm. So in 13-14 what the data is now showing is that there was a growth in the value of output mm -hmm. and also a growth in the value value added. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, they moved in the same direction, but value added grew faster than the value of output. Okay. Okay. So, okay. But they're mo they're moving in the same direction, not in opposite directions. Okay. So one well, last mm -hmm. question, uh, uh, Dr. Pradeep said, if this trend persists, yeah. what, what you, you clearly explain the difference between uh, uh, actual volume growth and uh, productivity growth associated with higher profitability for companies but employment stagnating that's it which means if this trend were to further concretize you can have a you can have 10 percent gdp growth uh, with not much increase in employment uh, productivity fantastic productive productivity growth good profits profitability for the company right so so even a so in fact even a 10 percent gdp growth does not guarantee a, a pickup in employment well that's very un unlikely and let me explain why. Because if 8%, 8.5% cannot guarantee average, then how much will guarantee uh, a, a substantial pickup in employment? No, again, as I said, mm -hmm. this kind of in improvement in productivity mm -hmm. cannot be sustained for a, a long term. Okay. Right? Typically what happens is that at times when the economy is on a downturn, mm -hmm. companies actually invest mm -hmm. a lot of resources in improving productivity. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what we saw. That is, in 11, 12, 12, 13, mm -hmm. when the economy wasn't doing that, that great, I think companies improve, invested in improving productivity. Productivity, yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, this doesn't, uh, doesn't last for very long. Okay. Already in 13, when you get to 13, 14, mm -hmm. that gap between value added and the value of output, that's narrow so dramatically. So that phase is over. So now... now My sense is... That phase may not be over, but it's certainly tapering off. Tapering off, okay. It's certainly tapering off. So we are uh, in for some better times. Thank you very much, <laughs> Dr. Parose, for talking to us and clarifying uh, some of these uh, issues which are dogging the, the analyst community and others also. Uh, that's all we have in this edition of uh, State of the Economy.